ever since I was a kid, I used to write a lot just for myself, and I would um, I would keep a journal. I would try to write simple poems, nothing worth publishing. <laughs> made a batch of tamales one Christmas and I decided to write about it. Then I showed it to one of our family friends who was a publisher and she said, oh, you know, we can turn this into a story. It was just about the family who made tamales, you know, so it talked about the, the process. So that became my first published children's book. The title was Tamales Day. After that, I did a book, another book for Tahanan, which was uh, Inside Manila with Kids. It was a, it was a guidebook for parents with children, but where to take them around Manila and uh, what they could see or what they could enjoy. So this included places like the zoo and certain malls or the museums. Later on, uh, Bookmark got uh, entered into a project with Ramon Magsaysay Foundation. They wanted to create a series of children's books regarding the lives of the awardees. So they assembled a team of authors to actually write the books, and I was one of the authors whom they invited. The first person I wrote about was an awardee from Vietnam uh, named Vo Tong Xuan. And then I think the second person I wrote about was Mother Teresa, and the third awardee I wrote about was Jesse Robredo. After that, Bookmark started a series on modern-day Filipino heroes, and uh, so I, I wrote for that also. But I would I would do maybe one book a year. I don't actually write fiction. I the writing I tend to do tends to be based on maybe a simplification of true events. One of the big projects that I have, probably the biggest project that I had uh, connected to Bookmark, was funded by the National Book Development Board and it was to produce a series of books on women of science. A series of 10 books on Filipina scientists who are currently working in the Philippines. It's challenging because you know that this is a real person and you, you don't want to say or do anything that will misrepresent them. So there is a challenge to be uh, simple enough to communicate with, with the age group, younger kids. So you want to be simple enough to communicate to this age group, but at the same time, you still want to be truthful and you want to be as accurate as the medium will allow. I think Bookmark tries to give authors a tremendous leeway. They, they do offer some direction, like if I will send in a manuscript and the editors will say, well, I think we have to sharpen this point or we have to focus on this, and so I'll, I would uh, revise accordingly. Bookmark has a network of artists who are all very good, and they try to connect us with artists who can work on our manuscripts. There is a process by which the artist shows us some studies and then we, the authors, have an opportunity to say, well, that's not really what I wanted, or can you change it? And there's, there's back and forth, so there's, there is dialogue. This book, Made Perfect in Weakness, was about Rosel Ambubuyog, who was uh, a valedictorian of Ateneo, um, who is completely blind. This won the Kids' Choice Award of the uh, National Children's Book Award. And I think it was a tremendously high point because, um, you know, we were sitting at the award ceremony and they were giving out award after award after award and we weren't being called. So I was thinking, okay, I guess they just invited us to be polite. <laughs> and then all of a sudden when the last award was going to be given out, it was this book. We didn't expect it. I mean, I was ready to go home. In fact, I was already putting my stuff in my bag and, and start, I was starting to say goodbye to people. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, they called their names. So this was, this was definitely a high point. I've enjoyed it, certainly. And, and I think that the writing is an opportunity to learn and grow in, in a different area. It asks you to become better as, as a writer, but it also harnesses a, an interest and a passion. Writing for Bookmark has allowed me to keep 
that side of me healthy and thriving and, and alive. And it has certainly um, brought sort of a new dimension to my career. Over and above my teaching, my research, my service in Ateneo and in, in a science and technology kind of field, I can also, um, I have something else uh, to turn to for intellectual stimulation and creativity. Bookmark doesn't publish just to be profitable, although it is a, it is a corporation and therefore uh, commercial success is important. I think what Bookmark tries to do with its publishing is it tries to elevate and it tries to publish books with meaningful content, whether it's about manners or heroism or environment or culture, that's, that's what it tries to do. These are important and will always be relevant. I actually hope Bookmark is able to spread its reach a little more. There are markets out there that are very interested in the kinds of books that Bookmark publishes and I hope that Bookmark is able to reach them to share all of these and all of the things that they've been able to produce. Congratulations to Bookmark on its 75th anniversary. Thank you for all the opportunities that you've given me to express myself creatively. I hope that the years to come bring even more opportunities for you uh, to deliver the valuable messages that you deliver in your books.